How's it going? So, fusion reactor. If I want to continue down that fusion rabbit hole, I'm gonna need to upgrade some of my equipment. The first of which being this piece of trash. Now the biggest bottleneck in any sort of vacuum experiment is the amount of vacuum that you can pull. And my little Harbor Freight vacuum pump, I think it's not surprising to say it doesn't pull the best vacuum in the world. That being said, to get better vacuum equipment is a huge hurdle. Well, a huge financial hurdle. I wanna kick that hurdle down. So today I wanna to try and build an oil diffusion pump out of household items, if you will. This'll be my uh, DIY crafts video. No, don't do that. So an oil diffusion pump is a type of vacuum pump that uses no moving parts unless you count oil as a moving part. <laughs> it works by having a bottom reservoir of oil, which is heated and creates oil vapor, which can travel up through a column and create high velocity streams through three different stages of nozzles. After the oil vapor exits the nozzle, it will hit the water cooled body, condense into a liquid and fall back into the reservoir again. Now it works by that vapor capturing gas molecules and dragging it down to the bottom with it. And then that gas molecule will have a higher chance of exiting through the outlet port. So to build the majority of this pump, I ravaged the thrift store for all of their shiny stuff, like a troll or, or like a magpie. So I'm gonna start chopping all these parts up and see if there's anything that we can actually use to build this pump. Wait a minute, not that one. That was nearly a crisis. Alrighty, I think I figured out how this thing's gonna work. Now if I can refigure it out. The outer body of it is gonna go like cup, piece of a bowl, sugar pot, and then I'm gonna cut this little bowl up and use it as a jacket for the outside to water cool it. And on the inside of it, we go cup, rim of a cocktail shaker, inside of a thermos, measuring cup, piece of a lamp, lid of the cocktail shaker. This will create our three stages of oil vapor jets shooting downwards. So, nothing to do but to painstakingly try to TIG weld this very thin stainless. This might call for a montage. All right, stop the montage. This does not deserve a montage. This was hell. If you too are an amateur TIG welder at best and you hate yourself, I highly suggest welding coffee cups together. It's pure misery. I tried again and again to get this thing right until I finally landed on something that turned out, you know, not great, but semi-decent enough. Who knows if it's actually decent enough? I know it's watertight. We don't know if it's vacuum tight yet, but these things are so thin and made of probably the worst stainless steel that you can get. It's really difficult to weld these things, but we did it. A full bottle of argon later and lots of pain and suffering. I did it. <laughs> I do not suggest it though. I want to check that this thing can actually hold a vacuum, so. I gotta rig something up for that real quick. Two hours later. Oh, hallelujah. We did it, guys. We did it. I don't have to weld up tiny little holes anymore. So, the next thing we gotta work on is our little cone assembly here. I need to attach these pieces together while leaving a little bit of a gap on the inside to allow the oil vapor jets to exit. So my plan is to cut these very evenly spaced notches in the top of the cups. Then I can transfer the location of these little pillars onto my cup and somehow cut those out. Like so. And hopefully with a little bit of persuasion, we can get those tabs through our holes. Done it. To get the spacing right so the oil vapor can still escape, I'm just gonna jam some handy dandy Yu-Gi-Oh cards in there. You're a disgrace to the game. Hopefully this isn't worth money. Just like that. And then to further ensure that these Yu-Gi-Oh cards get turned into dust, we'll weld these tabs in place. Just like that. Now, just gotta do that two more times. Ta-da! Now, it's not great, but it's mine. And I love it. 
I think it'll work all right. I tested it by pouring water into it, but I think I should give it a proper vapor test. We'll use water vapor. I don't think water is going to be an accurate portrayal of oil vapor, but you can see some jets coming out of each of these. So, if we're not on the right track, at least we're on the right field. We're getting there. So, still thinking we're going to use this bowl as a water cooling jacket for this guy. And in order to persuade the water to make its rounds all the way across this surface, I've cut these little rings with holes in them. My initial intention was for the water to just pass through these holes, but I can kind of use these to make a spiral all the way up. That's even better. We're gonna do that. Got my fins installed. They're not perfect and they're only tacked, so it's not, you know, the only way the water can go. It's more of a strong suggestion. We'll just have to make sure to cool this thing with very suggestible water. Now, we can install our upper flange. All aboard! I'm not gonna let you watch any more of this. I'm starting to get embarrassed. Good lord, that was difficult. But I got it on there and it is good and tight. Now, just gotta weld it. Before moving on with this thing, I'd like to apply some JB Weld along this seam. I kind of didn't leave enough room to weld it. So I'm going to JB Weld this and honestly, I'm going to JB Weld everything for insurance. So I'll see you in 12 hours. All right, the JB Weld is all set up. Before installing our outlet port, we need to install the water jacket. It may be smart to install fittings before doing this though. So, I'm gonna do that. As you can probably tell, my bowl's not long enough. This is what happens when you try to eyeball everything. I know there are definitely better solutions to this, but I'm just gonna go ham with the JB Weld. And if this video ends up late, it's because of the amount of time I've had to spend waiting for JB Weld to set up. Sorry. Now, I know this is probably the jankiest, most redneck way to solve this problem. I really should just find a longer piece. But it's just for the water jacket. And this way I can kind of meld the JB Weld to be a little bit further away from these bolt holes. Which I couldn't do if I was just welding it. So, in a way, this is a good thing. All right, that is set up enough for me. You know, doing the JB Weld on there was kind of instant regret. This thing was gonna look all right if I just had the proper outer shield, but now it's kind of a mess. Um, whatever. That's what I get for trying to build this out of trash. Now we need to add our outlet port. So the outlet port on this thing needs to be at a right angle sticking out. That way, any oil particles that fly this way will hit the wall and hopefully condense and not end up in the vacuum pump. This side of the stem needs to be water cooled and I'm thinking I'm just gonna use this one inch pipe. That way there's a little bit of space around the pipe that we can run water through to water cool it. Now there's no Teflon on these because I'm just gonna weld it. I went ahead and cut the end off of this, and then this guy goes right here. I am seeing a problem now. This fitting goes too far up, so need a new plan. Problem solved. I just cut a street elbow and welded it on there. Kind of figured, while it's hot, while I got it on the bench, I'm gonna weld this tubing between the two water cooling jackets. That way, I don't need four fittings. I only need two fittings. Now for the final part of this build. We can install the cones. So, I need to cut out a base and then weld it on. For the base, I'm just gonna use this drop from the top flange here. Let me tell you, man, this stainless is expensive. So I'll just weld this in the middle of it, stick the rest of it over top, and then weld that in place. So as you can probably see here, I ran out of argon. 
So now, through the magic of video editing, it's four days later and the video's late. I'm sorry. It wasn't the JB Weld after all. So, with these hokey little no shielding gas tacks, I think that's fastened well enough to this plate. And we can go ahead and install the body. Done and done. Now, after this thing cools off, I'm gonna redo the JB Weld on both sides. I'm really kind of regretting that I did that. That was uh, that was one of those, I really don't wanna go to the store moments. But the best I can do now is just clean it up and make it look nice-ish. So I'm gonna do that. And then we gotta make a battle for this thing. Several days later. All right, guys. So I just spent the better part of the day working on this. This is halfway to a baffle. The idea being any particles of oil that try to get through here end up hitting the baffle and condensing and not getting up into the vacuum chamber. And as you can see, this thing is a hot mess. I don't like it. I don't want to waste any more time on it. I don't really use that mill all that often, so everything is loosey-goosey on there. It doesn't, as you can see, it's chattering all over the place. And I don't have any tooling that can actually cut that right angle in there. So I think before I waste any more time building this thing, I'm going to order the proper tools and just do it later. So in the meantime, my temporary solution that will become permanent if it works good enough is these little pieces. Let me tack them in place so you, so you can see what's going on. First layer goes in like that, and then the second layer goes on like that. And it's the same concept where we're gonna have to make a right angle turn to get through. Hopefully that'll catch most of the oil vapor and I don't have to make an actual baffle, but we'll see. Just like that. That's basically this thing built. Now we just need to test it. I went ahead and made this sphere. So this is just two Ikea bowls welded together and hopefully if we can actually sufficiently evacuate this chamber, this will be the body of my new fusion reactor. I welded this little flange on here. I cut out this gasket on the laser. So let's attach this to this and see if we can pull a vacuum. Hold on, I almost forgot. I need to fill this thing up with oil before attaching it, duh. And the oil that's actually for a diffusion pump is expansive. And I'm not about to throw $400 of oil into a thing made out of coffee pots. So the preferred oil for these things seems to be silicone oil. And I'm gonna try and refine this WD-40 silicone oil. I'm basically following some sketchy looking online how-to that I found. We'll see how this works. So basically what we gotta do to refine this is heat it under a vacuum to get rid of any of the impurities or additives that are in here. So I pulled out old suck boy. So I've got a little hot plate for making s'mores. Very nice. And I've added a little pass through for the wires for that. Sealed it up with, you guessed it, hot glue. I've got this little dish here. I'm gonna clean it out with acetone and fill it up with the oil. And I'll set this on top of our s'mores maker. Very nice. Let her rip. So once that simmers down, we can connect our power and start heating it. All right, hooking up the power. It's really boiling now. Oh, looks like we splashed up a bit. Whoo! Well, I'll continue to let that sit for a while. Just to show you here, this is kind of what I'm looking for with the oil. It's under a halfway decent vacuum and it's been heated for maybe like 10-ish minutes to where it's boiling but not foaming up. And you know, this is all just me guessing here, but I think that's kind of what we're looking for. So then I'll unplug the heat source, let it cool all the way down, and then take it out of the vacuum. Good lordy. Yeah, that's a lot of vapor. So I'm gonna do like two more batches of this. Fill up that thing, stick the thing to the thing, and we can give this thing its maiden voyage. Finally. Don't mind me if I look dead on the inside. I've been chasing vacuum leaks for the last two days. But we got it! It can hold a vacuum now. Note the liberal amount of JB Weld. We've got our oil diffusion pump. It's sitting on top of our little s'mores maker. 
Very professional. I'm hooked up to the Harbor Freight vacuum pump as my roughing pump. I really hope that that can do it. For a vacuum gauge, I got this cheap CPS. It's just a thermocouple gauge. So not the best, but better than a dial gauge. And for my cooling loop, I've just got a pump in a bucket. In a bucket full of ice. In retrospect, the ice may have been a waste of money. Well, this is it, man. Ain't nothing to it but to do it. Don't mind the wonky dial, I, I don't know what happened. One jump cut and a full day later. One small jump cut for you. One full day later for me. Small jump cut for you. One and a half full days for me. One jump cut and two days later. As you can see, I've got a smaller ball here. I think I was flying a little too close to the sun with the big guy. And that was just for the vacuum system. Uh, imagine once I tried to put voltage to it. Nightmare. But I got my water cooling system going. I've also, I've got a different type of silicone oil in there. And I just did the same process that I did with the other with this. So we'll see how this works. All righty, 490. Uh, it helped to uh, plug it in, huh? Now this is gonna take quite a long time because we need to wait for the heat to permeate all the way up that center column. So, I'll be back. I'll leave this running in case it blows up. Got a bit of a refill from the water cooler here. That's lower than I've ever seen. Looking okay. Look at that, we're below 100. Out of curiosity, I just stuck the gauge right on the vacuum pump, and it's kind of settled around 560 microns, which means my poor pump is probably having a hard time. It also shows that the oil diffusion pump is working. So, I'm gonna turn this off, I'm gonna let everything cool down, I'll do an oil change on the roughing pump, and we'll give this one more shot. Well, it sort of works. I'm already late on this video, so I'm just gonna post this as is, but I am gonna keep messing around with different oils and whatnot, see if I can get a better vacuum. I don't think it's completely out of the question that I'm gonna totally rebuild this thing. At the very least, I'll post like a small rundown of the new build. I, I don't think I'll do a whole nother build video on that, but could just be the oil. Yeah, I mean, this thing is pretty dank janky, and I can't say I'm totally happy with it, nor do we get the vacuum that I need. Uh, it could be an oil problem. It could also be that the geometry of the thing is a problem. I mean, it's it's cups from Goodwill. So, <laughs> yeah. Either way, I think we can call this a slight success. And you guys will see what I end up doing with this thing. So, thanks for sticking around. If you like what you saw, leave a good old danger. Think about subscribing and thank you for watching.